the year again, isn't it? We're going to be talking this morning about the birth of the Savior. We all know who it speaks of. The birth of the Savior. And we're going to see what the prophet Isaiah had to say about our Lord before it ever happened. So we read from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 and in the first 12 verses of 53rd chapter. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And then we go to the 53rd chapter, the prophecy of our Savior. Verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, but when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He had brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. He shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Ever since that Adam had sinned, God had promised them a Savior from the Garden of Eden. And if you will, look at the next verse down at the bottom of your page, Genesis 3.15. The Lord said to Satan, the form of the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus, of course, was the seed of the woman. It was prophesied that a woman was going to give birth to the Savior of the world. Women over the years longed to mother that child. She was to be again the seed 
of the woman, not the seed of man. You and I are the product of man. That's the difference in us and our Lord. Eve thought when she gave birth to her first child, Cain, she said, I've gotten a man child. Most scholars that I've read after think that Eve thought she had given birth to the Savior. Not so. She gave birth to Cain who became a murderer. Just the opposite of a Savior. But God promised that a Savior would become through the woman. Particularly a woman that was after the descent of Abraham, Judah, and David, and many others in between. We read last Sunday where there was 42 generations from Abram to uh, the time our Lord came. And he was broken up by 14 generations three times. But it was prophesied that a Jewish mother was going to give birth to the Savior that Isaiah spoke of. It was to come through Judah. Judah was the fourth born child of Jacob. Reuben was the first born. And God looked on Reuben and said, Reuben, you can't feel the bill. Because of what you've done. He had had an affair with his stepmother. Scripture says that he went up to his father's couch. Therefore he was deprived of being of the lineage of the Savior. And then the next came Simeon and Levi, the second and the third son of Jacob. They murdered their own brother-in-law. And because the Lord said they had shed innocent blood, they were refused the lineage of the Savior. So it fell on the fourth born, born who was named Judah. Our Lord in one place is called the root of the line of the tribe of Judah. But each mother-to-be rejoiced, hoping to bear that son who would become the deliverer of the house of Israel. And the Jews surely recognized the need of an earthly deliverer because of their calamities that had come upon them. Over and over, the nation of Israel would get into trouble and God had to judge them. He allowed them to be carried away by, as we mentioned last Sunday, by the Babylonians. And then four other power, or four powers totally uh, ruled over them. So they realized, as they had been in slavery, that they needed to be delivered. But our Lord looked far further than that. He needed they needed a savior from their sin. That's what the Lord said when our Lord came that He was going to bear our sin. He was to be born of a virgin. That means some, a woman that had never known man from the house of Israel. Mary was to become that blessed one. And I tell you today, <laughs> Mary is to be adored but not worshipped. I'm a football fan. I like high school football. I like college football. But if you cut on your TV this morning, or any of the next day or two, they're going to be showing this. North Shore over here was playing for the state championship last night. At four seconds to go, time had run out, and they, the quarterback took the ball and threw it for what? A uh, hail Mary, wasn't it? Now what's it? We got to, what we got to do with Christmas? Well, the Catholics believe in praying through Mary. 
But I don't know what Mary had to do with it, but it worked last night. <laughs> North Shore became the new state champions of the top, top bracket in high school football, 6A. But it was done through what we call a Hail Mary. I mean, this last shot. <laughs> But Mary, mistakenly, has been worshipped over the years. And folk, there, there's one way to the Father in heaven. It's not through Mary. Right. It's through the Son of the living God. His name is Jesus. Mary was a house of David, was she not? You know, we'd wonder... David had a great son named Solomon came after him, but when our Lord comes back, he's going to sit on the throne of, of Solomon. He's going to sit on the throne of David. And through David's loins was to come the Savior, at least as far as the, the mother part. Although people had gossiped over 30 years, Saying that Christ was born of fornication, Christ was born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Spirit of God. And Jesus had all the characters of the promised one that was prophesied even from Isaiah. He was born in Nazareth. No. His parents lived in Nazareth, but it became tax time. Y'all remember the story of Christmas. And each man had to go to his own home base to pay his taxes. Mary being nine months pregnant. And y'all remember the story how that there was no room for Mary and Joseph or the Christ child that was to be born and therefore, the manger fit the bill of good, didn't it? But our Lord was born in Bethlehem, the city of David. The word Bethlehem comes from two Hebrew words. Bayith lakim. Bayith meaning house. Lakim meaning bread. Did not our Lord say that he was the bread of life? He's ever bit of that, my friend. But looking back at our prophecy, if you would, on your, on your paper, in Isaiah 53, verse 2, he was speaking of the Savior. It says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was as a root out of dry ground. What does that mean? Our Lord grew up in Nazareth. And the Jews said of our Lord, I asked Joseph the carpenter's son from Nazareth, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? They said. Can but it started in Bethlehem, didn't it? 60 miles south. And folks, 60 miles is a long way when you got to travel without an automobile or any modern day transportation. You think about what they had to travel by foot, folks. 60 miles and rough terrain. <coughs> by the way of interest, not, not tied to my message this morning, but in today's paper, over in Jerusalem, uh, they've got pictures of, of the relics of the war from 1967 when they regained Jerusalem. And they're going to open up the place where our Lord was baptized by John the Baptist because it's been closed ever since that six-day war in 1967. And they showed all the bombs and what have you that were the remaining ones that they have been recovering from that area. So be careful if you go over and want to be baptized like Jesus in the River Jordan. 
because they said it's a dangerous place. Uh, but anyway, if you look at your paper today, you'll find that article, quite a large uh, article on it. But our Lord was as a root out of dry ground, no form, no comeliness. He didn't appear as a king of whom he was. He was called the king of the Jews. He's going to be called the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Verse 3 tells us that he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. He wept that men were blinded in their sin. That they rejected him as a savior. The shortest verse in the Bible. What won't tell me what it is? Two words. Jesus wept. Amen. Jesus wept. They gave him reason to weep. Because they had rejected him. He came to them. Spent three and a half years with them. And over in the book of Acts chapter 1. We find that only 120. Were committed believers. They were gathered together. there on the day of Pentecost. Although thousands had heard him. As he ministered to them. And then verse tells us, verse 4 tells us of Isaiah 53, he said, Surely he hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was a man of sorrows, was he not? Because he cared for us. Past tense, present tense, and forever tense. He cares for us. Verse 5 says he was wounded for our sins. Hung on that old rugged cross. Well, they nailed him there. And they mocked him. and said he saved others. He can't save himself. Isaiah tells us that he was bruised for our iniquities. Our sins were nailed to the cross. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we're healed. Look at the last verse on your paper, folks. This sums it up, what Christmas is about. The last verse on your paper. Our Lord said, as he was about to be taken to the cross, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this hour, or for this cause, came I unto this hour. Folks, the reason the Lord was born in Bethlehem without sin, and knew no sin, and lived a righteous life, was so he could become the one who would lay down his life Amen. for his friends. Folks, that's what, what plain and simple in a nutshell. Our Lord came and was born of a woman to fulfill the mission that he tells us of here, for this cause came I unto this hour. Folk, that was to die and defeat death for you and I. He paid the price that you and I cannot pay. None of us has that kind of a bank account. But he paid it with his own precious sinless blood. He said, they don't take my life from me. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I have power to take it up again. Amen. And folks, he took it up again. He's seated by the right hand of the Father, 
waiting for the time the father says, son, it's time to go and gather mine together. If you're here this morning and you've never made peace with the one that we're celebrating his birthday, Christmas, his name is our Lord Jesus Christ, then I'd say to you today, you need to commit your life unto him. Take him as your savior. And that'll save you not only now, but forever. <laughs>